three qualities we try to develop as we meditate. Alertness, ardency, and mindfulness. Alertness is paying attention to the present moment, what you're doing and the results of what you're, you're doing. Ardency is the desire to really do it well. In the canon they talk about ardency as being the feeling you have when you realize that if you don't develop skillful qualities of mind, there's going to be suffering down the line. If you allow unskillful qualities to stay, there's going to be suffering down the line. So you do your best to be as skillful as possible. Mindfulness is what keeps this in mind. At the same time, reminding you to stay alert to what's actually happening. Because you may have some ideas about what's skillful, but they may not necessarily be, be accurate. So you've got to check them. And you've got to check your actions to make sure they really are skillful, in line with your intention. These qualities are listed under right mindfulness, but they apply to concentration as well. In fact, there's no real clear line between mindfulness practice and concentration practice. If you are very mindful and alert and ardent, the mind's going to settle down. That's how you get the mind to settle down. That's how you get it to stay settled down. And the quality of ardency is what gets the concentration stronger and stronger. In fact, the ardency is very directly related to the development of discernment. As you look at what you're doing and ask yourself, is this good enough? Is there still some stress here? To what extent is the stress unnecessary? To what extent is the stress level of stress changing? Is it going up or down? This is where you get to watch. If the level of stress goes up, you can ask yourself, what did you, what did you just do? If it goes down, what did you just do? This is how you get more sensitive to the actions of the mind and the results. So the ardency is the factor that we have to work on, because that's what keeps the meditation going and makes it better. And if you learn how to ask these questions of yourself at the right times, when the mind first begins to settle down, you have to be very quiet. Don't push it too much. In other words, don't question and probe it too much. You just want to ask yourself, is this good? And if it's good, okay, we're going to stay here. And you fight off any other thoughts at that moment. Just stay still with the breath. Do you really settle in and have a sense of being nourished by the breath? nourished by the concentration. And then you can ask yourself, is this really good? Could this be better? You're learning to be a real connoisseur of your pleasure, a real connoisseur of the breath. And as for what level you're on, that's not really the issue. I noticed when people would come to John Fuang and they'd tell him of their meditation experiences in hopes that he would say, oh, this is the first John or this is the second John. He'd never label it this or that. He'd simply ask them, what does it feel like? He'd get them to describe it in their own terms. And then he'd give some suggestions. And the suggestions would basically come down to this, look for any unnecessary stress there. So the question isn't, when you gain concentration, what level it is, the question is, what are you going to do with it? How can you use this as a basis for more discernment? Because these questions you're asking, in the beginning they're like refinements of the questions of hunger. The basic question of hunger is, where do I get to eat next? Do I stay here or do I go someplace else? What do I eat? Here we're talking about not only physical eating, but also the way we try to find mental nourishment in our emotions, and other people's emotions, status, wealth, whatever. And it's good to step back every now and then and ask yourself, well, is this really good eating? 
In other words, are you really nourished? Are you creating trouble for yourself by the way you eat? Unnecessary trouble? There's a phrase in time that if you know how to eat, then you can eat for a long time. In other words, you don't go gobbling down everything you can get your hands on. You learn to share. You learn to think about how other people are eating as well. This is one of the reasons why generosity comes at the beginning of the practice. Because the mind's basic relation to its experience is to feed on things. But generosity is when you decide not to. You learn a little bit of delayed gratification and a little bit of compassion. You think about other people's needs as well. There's a moment of freedom there in that decision. The realization that you don't give in to your original greedy impulses, and there's a benefit that comes. That's an important realization. In fact, that's the underlying insight that allows us to step back more and more and to question the way we're feeding on things and to ask if there's something better. This is where discernment comes from. It comes from generosity. From the realization that we do have choices. We don't have to be pushed by those questions of hunger that demand an answer right now, right now. And then from that first act of material generosity, we find there are other kinds of generosity as well. There's the generosity of giving your time, giving your energy, giving your knowledge, giving your forgiveness. The generosity of being virtuous, in other words, deciding you're not going to harm anybody. You give safety then. You're not going to kill or tell anybody else to kill. You're not going to steal or tell anybody else to steal. No illicit sex, no lying, no taking of intoxicants. All of those decisions, all of those promises you make yourself are a gift to yourself and to others. The desire to meditate well is also a gift, because through the meditation you learn how to look after your own needs in a way that doesn't have to take things from anyone else, and you have more to offer. And there's less greed, aversion, and delusion coming out of your mind into your actions, and there's less of your greed, aversion, and delusion that other people are going to suffer from. So these questions of discernment that ask about the level of stress and whether it's necessary and what you can do to put an end to that stress, they all come out of that moment of freedom when you chose to give rather than to take. And you realize that there is another way of finding happiness. As the practice progresses, these questions go beyond the question of how to feed, and they turn into the question of is it possible to find a happiness that doesn't need to feed at all. That's where the teachings are headed. That's where they become really noble. We talk about the noble truths. I was reading recently someone was saying it was a mistranslation. There's nothing noble they said about stress, nothing noble about craving. But really there is. If you learn how to ask these questions, you're putting the mind on a noble path. It leads to a noble destination. And in the original sense of noble in the time of the Buddha, also meant that they're true for everyone. They're not just personal opinions, they're not just a cultural assumption. There's something about these truths that are true for everybody. So they really are noble. They give you a guide to a noble life. They point out the fact that if there's suffering or stress, you try to comprehend it. You don't just accept it as being inevitable. You try to figure out what it is that you're doing to cause it. And if you can see the cause, then you abandon it. 
you develop the path and so you can realize the end of suffering. This is a guideline to a noble life in which your desire for happiness doesn't have to conflict with anyone else's. So this element of desire really is an important part of the path. It's written there into right effort. It carries over into mindfulness through the quality of ardency, and from there into your concentration through the quality of ardency. It's the ardency that gives rise to discernment. So the question always is in your meditation, are you ardent enough? What can you do to give rise to more ardency? Because it's in the ardency where everything noble about the path lies.